So, I'm going to welcome to the stage our first two teams in bracket one. So, from San Diego, former hometown, Open Index Protocol, and Amy James, please come to the stage with Devin. All right. In this corner, weighing in as the best of Wyoming wild card, Dan Shields from Sovereign Keep with Tristan. All right, Amy, ready? I'm ready. All right, so I'm gonna get off the stage. So is anyone here worried about the future of the internet? Yeah, are you worried about regulation? Privacy? Censorship? How about getting demonetized, deboosted, or even deplatformed altogether? Yep. Yeah, right? How about getting fooled by deep fakes? Does that freak you out? <sighs> All of these problems stem from one root cause, the walled garden model. Each of these companies has a proprietary index and distribution network, so if I'm an Apple Music user and you're a Spotify user, I can't share a playlist with you. And this isn't right. The web was always intended to be decentralized. But today, it's a hub and spoke shape. And it's at these hubs, these central points of failure, that platforms control what we access. The solution is a fully decentralized specification for indexing and distribution. We call it Open Index Protocol. Think of it like a library. We use the blockchain like the card catalog. It stores metadata about the information. And we use distribution networks like IPFS and BitTorrent like the library shelves. It's where the information is kept. There are many projects actively using it or preparing to. This photo is from a summit we had to plan for future development. The business model is the secret sauce. It's how we combine incentive and decentralization that's motivating such awesome projects to choose Open Index Protocol. There are five ways to capture value in the system. As a publisher, influencer, platform, storage and distribution provider, and security provider. When we're looking at the network in 3D like this, we have the perspective to see that capturing value falls into two basic categories, subjective and objective. The application layer competes on subjective quality, so these are things like user experience, curation and discovery, and original content. And the protocol layer competes on objective efficiency. So these are things like index security, file storage, and transaction confirmation. And since incentives influence outcomes, we are about to see deep fakes and fake news follow in the footsteps of email spam. They can be filtered out and no longer annoy us because it's not just easy to solve this problem with Open Index Protocol, it's profitable. But the key is that these aren't hierarchical layers. The system is fully decentralized and there are no central points of failure. We are on the precipice of a generational format shift, the kind that revolutionizes industries. Sheet music to recorded music, radio to physical media like records, tapes, and CDs. We are about to see some giant companies fall and the next legendary companies rise because we are now completing the shift from physical distribution to digital distribution. It started 20 years ago with Napster. But it hasn't been completed yet because until now, there hasn't been an open specification that was capable and flexible enough for everyone. When we began working on this five years ago, no one even believed that these problems were possible. But now we have the technology ready to go mainstream right as the world is calling for it. The biggest concern with unintended consequences is that the technology will be used by criminals to distribute illegal content. And I do worry about how innocent people could be harmed, but I also remind myself that this same argument was used against the printing press and many other advancements in distribution technology. And to be totally honest, I wanted to work on this project because it creates a lot of cool, new, positive externalities. What sets Open Index Protocol apart is that it's fully decentralized, interoperable, permissionless, and open source. The founder of Overstock, Patrick Byrne, revealed on a shareholder call that they are building a bunch of technology on OIP and that they chose it because of how the business model combines incentive and decentralization. And we have been honored to be supported by the inventor of the World Wide Web himself, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who has publicly called our technology thrilling. 
We work with people who believe in the freedom of the internet. Right now, we're looking for developers, we're educating government officials, and we're raising a seed round to launch our browser application. If you want to help make the internet free again, or you know someone we should speak with, I hope you'll reach out. Thank you. Okay, four minutes and 35 seconds. That's one nice precedent there. We're gonna reset the clock, judges. Great. Hey guys, thank you so much. Really awesome presentation. Uh, so I was just wondering, when you're uploading new data to the index, do you, have you solved for the ability to uh, uh, subscribe uh, ownership of that data? And can, can that be changed? Yes, absolutely. So you saw the Teton County property records are in there, right? So mm -hmm. the different ways that things can be signed, they can be signed with my private key if I publish something as a content creator, but they could also be signed with like the clerk's public key for a whole batch of records to mm -hmm. um, identify those. We essentially just borrow the properties of the blockchain so that the signature that's used for the transaction, well, actually we separate it. You can have the data be uh, signed by one person and another yeah. person put it up so you can actually see the difference between those signatures. So yeah, it, it's assumed that any new piece of data that's put up, the person that, that put it up is the owner of it. They're the first uh, mm -hmm. copy of that in the index. Mm -hmm. So it, you, you assume first an original use case. Is there a way to yes. so change way that to, if it's not? Yes. Yeah, okay. absolutely, yeah. And we also have this verified publisher function so that um, if I'm a noteworthy artist, I can verify my account using an external database like mm -hmm. um, Music Brains or Twitter or IMDb or something like that, Facebook, and then you'll know that my content is mine because it's signed with the, yeah. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. This is amazing stuff. I really appreciate you guys doing it and looking forward to the problems. I'm wondering, um, is it, it going to be like a foundation? Is it going to be a for-profit? How are you going to determine who's, uh, who are members, uh, who's the board, and uh, salaries, stuff like that? For sure. And so where does the money come from? So today we're talking about Open Index Protocol. We're also building a browser application for it called Alexandria. So that is just like a regular company that will have a regular investment path and, and, and be profitable that way. Open Index Protocol is going to be forming the Open Index Protocol Working Group, is what we're calling it right now. And it's all of the different projects that are building on it, working together to develop the spec. And that will be formalized over time. We have plans for that. And you join just by doing things if you provide if you build a platform and that gets users and there is use coming through it that's going to earn you your, your your part of it so there's five different stakeholders that she talked about that are, are that the whole system depends on providing service those are the stakeholders that make up the the open index protocol working group based upon how much work they're doing and service they're providing um, great job on the presentation it was very exciting um, Thank you. The slide that really stood out to me was the last slide where uh, there was the hashtag, make the internet free again. And I would, I would think the internet already is uh, largely free. Um, a lot of these companies uh, that you know, you've uh, this described as being part of this walled garden issue, um, they operate on a freemium business model, um, which is um, financed by you know, ad-based revenue. Um, and if you wanna bypass that, you can pay them money so that you don't have to see those ads. And the way the incentives have been aligned um, with all the stakeholders in that ecosystem, it's resulted in a lot of incredible um, content. You know, like mm -hmm. the case of YouTube, it's mostly awesome, right? Um, how would this approach, um, you know, beat that system? Yes, sir. No, go ahead. Uh, well, for one thing, we're starting to see that it's it's reaching the edges of how it can incentivize good business. You're starting to see like bot farms come up and start absorbing all the advertising money out there, and that underlines undermines the entire thing. Secondly, um, one thing that we we kind of think that this is going to make a big improvement over is that right now you can only monetize things at the value of an ad less than a penny, or something you could sell with a with a credit card, so like a buck. And a whole lot of the content on YouTube, especially, and all across the web the value is probably somewhere in between that. And so being able to set an actual price and do it with micropayments, something that wasn't possible before cryptocurrencies, we think it's gonna change it in, in that it's going to increase the size of the market dramatically and increase the number of people participating in it. Okay. Right, thank you. Yeah, I, this is a question, you know, the business guy, yeah. that I ask, uh, What's your sustainable competitive advantage for yeah. your customers now you're going to monetize them? Absolutely. So the best way to think about Open Index Protocol is comparing it to the web itself, HTTP. So we remember um, 
HT, or we remember Netscape being the first browser that worked on HTTP, but the way that Netscape made their money was by selling the servers that ran the internet. That's basically the same thing here. So by providing the services that run Open Index Protocol, the file storage and distribution, the index security, you can make money, but you're making them in fungible tokens instead of paper-based contracts here. It's a little bit safer in that way, a little bit more sustainable. Um, and then you can also run a business like Alexandria at the application layer that's collecting the platform cut and the influencer cut for the service that it's providing. And so really, the key to why Open Index Protocol is working. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, can we show the results? Let's see what the crowd thought. I got that summertime. Whoa, a good match. So the crowd is going to award five points to Open Index Protocol. Congratulations on that. Give these guys a hand. That was an awesome first round. An amazing first round. So uh, they set a good bar. We got a total? Okay, so um, we have five extra points. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Five extra points being awarded by the crowd vote to Open Index Protocol. So. Can we get a little bit of a uh, suspenseful uh, something or other here? Let's see. <laughs> Your winner is of the opening round battle going to the green round where the money is made. Final four is Ms. Kaiser. Open oh. index protocol by score of. 68. 168.